predict the health of a machine. In the old days, it would have been when something broke, and then there might have been smoke, and then maybe something worse. Now, fortunately, we have solutions to catch concerns before they become big problems. But what does it take to design a system that can help us reduce downtime and provide real-time management for our machines? Well, get your hard hats on, my friends. Let's talk about prognostic health management. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Prognostic health management, also known as predictive maintenance, is a vital component of our industrial ecosystem. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Eric Wang from Advantech and I chat about the roles that data acquisition, data processing, and artificial intelligence play in prognostic health management, the challenges of building these types of systems, and what kind of predictive maintenance solution would be the best fit for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Advantech. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Amelia. Sure. Okay, so we're talking about prognostic health management and predictive maintenance solutions today. But Eric, before we dig into the details, what exactly is prognostic health management and why do we need it? Okay, so if the machine is in good condition, then the vibration pattern will be regular and stable. But once some parts in the machine are a failure, you will start to see irregular vibration pattern or some peak. So the idea for the prognostic health management or pretty maintenance is that by analyzing the vibration pattern, you can find some sign of the failure based on the data you have. Like if you know it's about to malfunction, instead of shutting down the machine when something happened, you can plan it ahead. So it kind of reduces the impact on the machine failure. So you can have a better schedule for this and you can reduce the downtime. So that's the idea of the pre maintenance and the pH and, and why people want that as their solution. Fantastic. Now, at the heart of these systems is data and the processing of that data, right? Can you walk me through the flow of a typical system? Yes. So I think uh, data acquisition is very important, especially in the PHM and the predict maintenance. So from the floor, you can see from left to right, you have a machine you want to monitor, right? So you need to have some device to collect information like the sensor and the signal conditioner, the physical phenomenon like the temperature, vibration, or acoustic. And the signal conditioner will turn those physical signal into some common signals like current or voltage. Okay, then the data acquisition will acquire those current or voltage and digitalize it into some format that your computer can recognize so that it can do the further analysis or the AI or predicting maintenance. So basically the data acquisition is responsible to get the accurate data. So if the data is accurate, then you will have an accurate result based on your uh, analysis. So that's why it's important. It's, it's a source of all the data. And one key thing is the sampling rate, because the, for this kind of signal, what you want to do is catch the anomaly that might happen in a very short time. So the definition of sampling rate is like how many samples you can acquire within a specific period. So the higher the sampling rate is, the more data you can catch within a period. So that's why you need a high sampling rate. Okay, so there are two things for a data conversation. One is to try to resist the noise to get accurate data and the high sampling rate. Okay, so Eric, how does data acquisition lead to predicting the health of a machine? Can you explain a bit about that process? So the data acquisition will acquire the vibration signals. And the next step, if you want to do the evaluation for your machine health, based on a lot of theory, it requires some computing uh, calculation data processing here. 
make a decision based on the data trend or the data value you have. Okay, so these are key things you will need to evaluate the machine health. So what do you see are the biggest issues that we need to overcome when it comes to building a PHM system? So basically, I think you can divide it into two parts. And for the first part, I would say it's uh, like hardware. So uh, it includes the data acquisition to acquire the vibration signal. And another part in hardware is like computing. Like you need to do the calculation or the AI algorithm. So you need some computing. And another part is software. You need to do some coding to have a software to deal with all the data, PHM, predictive maintenance, uh, inside in that, make a decision based on all the data. So there are two parts. And these two parts are a challenge of uh, building the PHM systems. So what kind of solutions are we looking at here, Eric? What are my options? Mostly, I think there are two types of users. First type of users is that they are familiar with the PHN, the predictive maintenance. They know how to analyze the data. But what they are lack of is the hardware to provide the data to them. So what they're looking for is data acquisition modules to acquire the accurate signal for vibration. And for another type of users, they don't know the benefit of PHM, but they don't have a background. They don't know how to implement in their application. So what they are looking for is total solutions. So uh, it includes the data organization, the computing, and also the pretty maintenance inside, and even includes the vibration sensors. So what kind of solutions does Advantech offer in this space? For the hardware, we have a data acquisition module. So the first one on left, you can see the PCIe card responsible for the data acquisition. And another solution is users, they are limited to the PCIe slot. They can consider embedded computer with iDAC module, which is the USB 3 interface modular I.O. And the product called a Mic 1800 series. It's a combination of computing and data acquisition in a compact size. The support for the different type of coding language is very important. So we have an SDK that supports a lot of programming language like Python, C, C++, um, LabVIEW. So users can easily implement our API with our data acquisition module to their code very easily. So that's for type one users. So for another user, they're just looking for the total uh, PHN solution. We also have two options for them. Uh, we have WISE um, 750 and uh, the WISE 2410. For the WISE 750, it has the vibration sensor integrated with it. The best part is that it's using the Renesis uh, machine learning IC. So you can do the machine learning to do the uh, pre-day maintenance. And another option is the WISE 2410. It's a wireless vibration sensor. And the processor in it will do the calculation for all the factors you will need to do the predictive maintenance. And both of them include the vibration sensors. All right. So, Eric, can we take a closer look at the PCIe 1800 series? What all does that solution include? The PCIe car is dealing with the data acquisition to acquire the vibration signals. Our DAQ core supports a lot of programming language like C Sharp, Python, and LabVIEW. And here are some list of the product we have. You can choose what kind of I.O. module you need. Excellent. Now, what about the iDAC USB 3.0 solution you mentioned? What all does that entail? The interface connect between the module and the, the embedded PC is the USB 3. So you can use the embedded computer like our Uno series and the connect with the iDEC series, which supports the program language you need. The iDEC series is a module I.O. So you have more flexibility in I.O. combination. And for this type of applications, I think time synchronization is very important especially for some precise measurements. 
The enclosure is aluminum alloy, which is very good for resist the noise. So that is very important because the noise will affect the accuracy of your data. So, Eric, you also mentioned the Mike eighteen hundred as an option here as well. What does that look like? The idea for the Mike eighteen hundred series that we try to come. By the both strength of the computing and the DAQ, so we integrate the both functions in one product. So it can deal with all the data acquisition tasks and also do the computing. Okay, so do we have any options when it comes to the Mike eighteen hundred? Sure. So we have Mike eighteen sixteen and the Mike eighteen sixteen R. So. They both have the capability to do the data acquisition, so you can see the resolution and the sampling rate is the one mega samples per second. One special feature for the Mic 1816R is that it supports the IEP sensors, which means you don't need to deal with all the signal conditioning parts for the IEP vibration sensors. They both use the powerful CPU to do the computing, like Intel or the Ambest, and it's running on the operation system like Linux or Windows. The solutions we offer for the Type One user who are looking for just the hardware, the decision and computing. And next part, I would focus on the all-in-one solution for like users. They want to implement the PHM predictive maintenance, but they probably don't have knowledge and they don't have the device. So we have all-in-one solution to make it easier for them. Okay, so Eric, I'm also really interested in that AI engine solution you mentioned before. So, can you give me some details about that solution as well? Yeah, sure. For the Y750, it has the vibration sensors and the data acquisition capability in it. It's using machine learning IC from Renesis. So the beauty of the machine learning is that you can create a specific file algorithm. Based on the different types of the vibration pattern, so that you can get more accurate or better evaluation. So, what is all included in the Y750 DAC? It includes the data acquisition and the sensors. So that part will help the users to overcome the challenge of the data acquisition. It's using the Renesis. Uh, vibration and uh, machine learning, I see that to deal with all the um, AI algorithm and the computing. It's a combination of both data acquisition, computing, and AI and the predicting maintenance algorithm. So, can you walk me through how this solution works? What steps do I need to consider here? So, when doing the machine learning, you need to feed the data to it. So, with this model, we try to make it very easy for the users. You just connect sensor that comes with the Y750 to collect the data for a period of time to feed the data to the AI engine. We provide a utility to do that, so you just follow the instruction and、uh, click some buttons and collect the data. Then you can have a trained model specific for this machines. And the next step, you just implement this trained model to the Y750. Then you can put the model in to monitor the status of the machine. So all the data at the cloud will go through the machine learning IC in it, and it will do the calculation and tell you the result, like whether the machine status is good or not. Or even if you want to do the further analysis, you can also export the feature value like FFT RMS, helping user to go through the whole process. So the last solution you mentioned was the wireless vibration sensor, right? What are we looking at here? I think the strength and the benefit of this is the user they don't need to deal with all the wiring or communication, so it's easy to install and implement. You can see from the picture here, you put it on your motor or your pump, then you can start to collect the vibration signal. I think here in this slide, just to give you some idea how it works, the module will collect the vibration pattern 
and the processor will do some calculation to turn that vibration signal into some feature values like RMS or courtesies. And you can leverage the standard code ISO 10816 defined by the ISO that you can apply to evaluate the machine status based on the table here. It defines like the class one, two, four, and the value it should be. So this is for general purpose evaluation for the machines. They'll be different from the Y750. So Y750 use the machine learning algorithm to fit the behavior for each type of machines. And for Y2410, it uses the standard table and the ISO 10816 to evaluate the health of the machine. Okay, so I think we're almost out of time today, Eric, but first, can you recap your main points for me? Yes, yes. For the users who are looking for the hardware, the data acquisition, computing, and they will deal with all the algorithm, one solution is industrial computer plus the PCIe card, the embedded computer with the iDEC module, and also the all-in-one module like Mic 1800 series. They all support the SDK tool for the API like Python, LabVIEW, C. So user can easily implement that into their system and do the coding. And another we have is for the users, they are not familiar with this pretty maintenance PHM, and they are looking for total solution. So we have the WISE 750, which is using the Renesis machine learning IC. So you can leverage that to do the evaluation for the machine health status. We have a wireless vibration sensor called a WISE 2410. The processor will do the calculation and the term the vibration signal into some feature values like RMS. They all include the vibration sensor. So the user can basically just use the following structure and they can do the PHN evaluations. Excellent. Well, Eric, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Avantic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>